start to turn our attention to our Bibles. And uh, the scripture reading is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, 5, verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26. I'm reading from the King James Version. And God is not around, so I'm facing today. Exodus 15, verse 26. And it says here, it said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Wonderful, wonderful promise from God. The minister of the word today is Pastor Mark Chan. And he's from Singapore and is the pastor of Valley Silver Church. And uh, he's, he is also the stewardship director for the Singapore Conference. We'd like to hand the time to the Pastor Mark Chan. Good morning, Pastor Mark. Good morning and a happy Sabbath to all of you. Happy Sabbath. I send you greetings from uh, Singapore Conference as well as Valley Steel Road, Seventh day Adventist Church. You know, I come to this church, it's like uh, coming back home because I remember 10 years ago I conducted a uh, memorial service, a funeral service for our dead sister Margaret Mom. How many of you remember her? Sister Margaret Mom? Some of you remember. Yes. And I also remember Pastor Abel Banner. He used to be here last time. He is a good friend of my wife. Where's my wife? <laughs> she around? Oh, oh yeah, they're having a children's worship. I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Ho. Um, my friendship with him goes back to 10 years ago when he was about to do church planting. I remember met him in Penang when we were having a union retreat. My wife was in the union as a secretary to the director. Uh, but right now my wife is the director of the conference. So I praise the Lord for his blessing. Her pay is even more than me now. <laughs> I joined the church way back in 1979 when, through the health message. So the health message and my conversion experience goes hand in hand. So if you ask me not to live a healthy life, it's asking me to go against God. So this is my favorite topic. My signature message would be the seven habits of highly healthy people. Now this version is for church people. I conduct this talk to outside people. I take away a lot of Bible texts, but today you will get a glimpse of this uh, message for Adventists. Now, how many of you heard of this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey? Oh, quite a number of you. Now, today I would like to uh, copy, be a copycat, to adapt some of the principles. Instead of taking highly effective, I put the word healthy. I hope it's, uh, it's alright. They say, uh, in America, they are very particular about copyright. Are you okay? For us, in Singapore as well as in Malaysia, uh, you know what is copyright? Copyright means don't copy wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as you copy, you give the source, you give credit. Now, the first habit, according to uh, Stephen Covey, is be proactive. Proactive means what? is not to be reactive. Do not wait until the problem comes, then you deal with it. You deal with it before the problem arises. So in other words, be proactive means that you must exercise. Don't wait until you have stroke, then you start to exercise. A lot of stroke patients, they have to exercise. Those who are having diabetes, they have to exercise. Now, do not wait until you reach that stage. So by being proactive, you are actually 
having a healthy body which is honoring the temple of God. The Bible says the body is the temple of God. It says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now, how do we worship God? In the Old Testament, they worship God by offering sacrifices. Now we do not, because Jesus is our ultimate sacrifice. Today we offer our body as a living sacrifice. Now, you, might, you go back to the Old Testament teaching, how do they honor God? They must choose the best lamb, unblemished, must be healthy. Not that you want, not that they're sick or crippled or me. So today, if you want to give offering to God, one way is, look at your wallet, the best note, you give it to God. The first fruits of your harvest, for 10%, before you budget from your, uh, from your salary, give it to God. That's how you honor God. Do not wait until God send calamities, until He shake you, then you do remedial work. I also counsel a lot of uh, couples. I do premarital counseling as well as couples in crisis. You know, in Singapore, I, I train myself as a relational counselor, marriage counselor as well as health counselor. So I discovered that if you want to reach the outside world, there are two types of people. People with health problems as well as people with relationship problems. So if you train yourself to be counselor in these two areas, you reach any kind of people. So in other words, my focus is on uh, health. Be proactive. You must exercise. How does physical activity impact health? It reduces the risk of dying prematurely from heart disease, from developing diabetes, from developing high blood pressure. So do not wait until you have all these diseases, then you exercise. You exercise to prevent. But if you already have all this, the more you should exercise. So be proactive. And what else? It reduces blood pressure in people who already have hyperpressure. And not only that, it reduces the risk of developing colon cancer. Okay? Because a lot of these diseases has to do with impediments of circulation. Right? Blood has to circulate in this. Lack of circulation, you have stroke. Lack of circulation here, you have heart attack. Lack of circulation here, you have colon cancer. So exercise helps to circulate your blood. It also reduces depression and anxiety. So when you exercise, it produces endorphin, a happy hormone. Right? You don't have to eat chocolate to feel happy. It helps to control weight. It helps to build and maintain healthy bones and muscles and joints. By the way, if you want to be muscular, you don't just eat protein. If you want to have strong bones, you don't just take calcium. If you don't exercise, the protein will not be digested. Calcium likewise. So if you see advertisement, uh, drinking two glasses of milk will prevent osteoporosis is not true. It, uh, it will not be used unless you exercise. It helps older people become stronger and better to move about without falling. Uh, talking about falling, I miss my uh, good friend Alex Rajakumar. He fell. Okay. And uh, my prayers are with him. It promotes physio uh, psychological well being. Okay, habit number two begin with the end in mind. Okay, this is second habit of uh, Stephen Covey, I adopted it. It means, decide how you want to end your life. The Chinese will say, Choi. <laughs> Why talk about death? <laughs> if you are proactive, you will decide how you want to end your life. Now, all of us one day will either be translated or be resurrected. Right? But before that, if Jesus doesn't come, we will all die. 
Now, how you want to die? According to your certificate, should you die of heart disease? Should you die of diabetes, hyperpressure? It's better to die like Moses when God says it's time for him to die. You die. Remember the Bible says when he died, his vision is too strong and there's a lot of strength in him. How nice. Do you, do you hear of people who die in, the, in their sleep? Uh, that's the best way to die. Some people die uh, after a few years big bitten and uh, exhausted all the savings and the loved ones' savings, right? Don't do that. So if you decide to die without lifestyle diseases, then you work backwards. That's how you plan as well. A lot of people have planning, they have goals, they have objectives, they have vision. But for your life, for your body, what is your vision, what is your objective? You know, when we go to school, we learn to study well, we, we study academics, but we never study how to take care of our body. Right? We never study how to be a parent, how to be a girlfriend, how to be how to discipline your children. I wonder if you were to drive a car without taking lessons, what are the chances of you meeting an accident? It's very high, like hundred percent. Same here. If you don't go to school to learn life skills or taking care of your body, learn how to be a good parent, how to be a, a wife or a husband, what are the chances of having failure in relationship and failure in health? It's very hard. So we must follow this habit, begin with the end in mind. If you do not want to die of lifestyle diseases, start working backwards and have a plan. Now, the scripture reading says, the Bible actually God says, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God. Okay? Second requirement is that to do what is right in His eyes. Third requirement, if you pay attention to His commands. The fourth requirement, and keep all His decrees. And what will be the result? I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, this famous song writer or gospel singer, Don Moore says, I am the Lord that healed thee. Remember this song? I am the Lord your healer. In Singapore, we have a lot of uh, faith healing churches, right? Actually, when they sing this song, when people are sick, they claim this promise. It is claiming out of context. Why? Because God only heals you before you have diseases, not when you are sick. Right? He says, if you listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right, pay attention to His command, keep on saying, I will not bring upon you any diseases. For I am the Lord who heals you. So, in other words, if you are healthy, you are constantly being healed by God. Actually, the word health is the state of being healed. Am I right? Health is like. H E A L T H. You. The state of being you. Every day when you speak, you are being. The healing process takes place. Every moment when you eat, you must eat the food that heals you. A lot of people eat according to taste. That's why they eat a lot of. Uh, they say, yeah, wow, the food looks sinful. <laughs> Food that are tasty and may not be good for you. That's why we, as enlightened people of God, we must eat based on nutrition, not on taste. Taste is secondary. That's why if you are able to eat healthy food, you must be able to eat yogurt. At first, when I tried yogurt, it's an acquired taste. And then eat vegetables. It's also an acquired taste. But when people eat according to taste, they deep fry everything. Everything is goreng, goreng. Goreng, pisang, goreng, uh, nasi, nasi goreng, mie goreng, everything goreng. And in the end, when you die, you will be goreng. <laughs> now, what happened? You see, uh, the diseases. God said the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. God did 
did not bring diseases on the Egyptians, the Egyptians brought the diseases upon themselves because they have broken the laws of God. Now, the interesting thing is the Israelites, they died of old age and you cannot find their bodies. But the Egyptians died at early death. But they, they have bodies for, to be preserved for us to examine. What an irony. Their corpse were preserved for thousands of years, but they live a very short life on earth. Whereas the Israelites live a long, long time, but they cannot be found. So there's this university in England. They examine 14,000 mummies. Wow, talking about Mother's Day. <laughs> 14,000 mummies. And they found out through autopsy. They die of all these diseases. Heart disease, cancer, arthritis, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, rheumatism, and STD. What's STD? Sexual transmitted diseases. Now, are these modern diseases? Yeah. How come they die of modern diseases? Because of their lifestyle. Okay? Because God brought these diseases upon them because they will not have life. Now look at the chart here. This is the uh, leading cause of death in Singapore as well as worldwide. Now you look at cancer. Cancer is almost 30%. Heart disease plus uh, cerebral vascular disease. Actually these are together. It's also almost it's 32%. Almost 33. So in other words, in Singapore, as well as in Malaysia, every three person, one person will die of cancer. One person will die of either stroke or heart disease. Or the other half is other, other causes. The other one third is other causes. Whereas the world, only 31% heart disease, cardiovascular and cancer 13. Why? Because that includes the third world countries. The average jump. This is a statistics in Singapore. The top killer for cancer is what? Colorectum. And for women, it's breast. Second will be colorectum. Lung will be, of course, due to smoking, prostrate. Now, all this has to do with what? Eating too much meat. Okay? Here also the same. Breast and colorectum. Too much meat. Smoking. They say, and by the way, if you are a boss of a company, May I suggest that uh, you put the requirements uh, non-smokers only. Yeah. If you are a boss of a company, if you want to hire workers, make sure you put down there non-workers only. You know why? Because the statistics have been done. It says here, uh, research has been done. An employee who smokes costs his or her employee nearly 6,000 or 6,000 US per year. More than a non-smoker. Why? Because a non-smoker, uh, a smoker has to apply leave because they fall sick very often. And they are, they are not that productive because they smoke. Right? They, have, they need smoking breaks. <laughs> and by the way, you heard of first hand smoke. That means the person who smoke, that's the first hand. The second hand uh, is we who didn't smoke and breathe it. Do you know there is such thing as a third hand smoke? Hmm? How many of you know what is third hand smoke? What is third hand smoke? Third hand smoke is after all the smokes are gone, is it is in the paper, it's in the clothes, it's in the car, it's in the curtain. Okay? So if you buy a car from a smoker, a second hand car, straight away you know. That is a third hand smoke. If you want your company to be healthy, employ all those people who are non smokers. And if, if your present workers are smokers, uh, conduct a non smoking, a smoking cessation seminar. And if they quit smoking, give them bonus. <laughs> yeah. That's how you invest. Now, I want to introduce to you this book. This is actually out of print already, printed way back in 1976. It says, Why Christians Get Sick. Now, this guy is actually a pastor of a Baptist church. I think 
Baptist or Presbyterian, I'm not very sure. He got colon cancer. Of course, like many other churches, they believe in uh, faith healing. Then we discover not all people who pray very earnestly got healed. And you wonder why. He did research, he went to the Bible. He found out that many of those sincere Christians, after they got cancer, they pray and pray and pray. The cancer never left them. Why? He found out. As he began to endeavor to heal his own body, Reverend McMurs also began an intense search that would ultimately lead to an answer to his deeply heartfelt question, why Christians get sick. He concludes that Christians get sick because they have violated the natural laws of God and accepted modern society's diet and lifestyle. And how do they solve the problem? When people get sick, when they get cancer, to solve problems caused by this, they seek man-made solution in the form of prescribed drugs rather than changing back to the diet and lifestyle that God originally intended. Can you imagine? Is this Adventist teaching? Yes? Yes! And how come we need and a non adventist to tell us? We are enlightened people. We are actually 150 years ahead of modern research. Now, he talks, he concluded that Christians get sick because they have violated the natural laws of God. Now, when you talk about laws of God, there are four kinds of laws. I want to be Number one, the moral laws, the Ten Commandments. Number two, the civil laws. The civil laws are adopted by the government to maintain law and order. Like you can find it in uh, Exodus, all the laws. Like for example, you don't encroach in people's uh, territory. You owe money, you must pay money. Okay. And then there are health laws, right? <coughs> avoiding and curing diseases. And then there are ceremonial laws. The feasts and festivals that are nailed to the cross. So when Jesus died on the cross, what laws are nailed on the cross? The ceremonial laws, right? So when Jesus died on the cross, He doesn't... He died on the cross to save us, not to clean things. Right? Not to clean things, but to save sinners. So a lot of Christians say, hey, Jesus died on the cross. The law is taken away with. So you can call me a doubt No. You can steal? No. So the only thing that is law nailed on the cross is about the ceremonial laws. So Reverend Magnus concluded that because why we got cancer is because a lot of Christians, they not only nail the ceremonial laws, they also nail the health laws to the cross. You know, we, we took care of our car. And most of you drive, right? You come here. You don't put UV into your petrol tank. Right? <laughs> no. You don't put kerosene. You put the best petrol, best motor oil. But now we put rubbish into our body, we expect miracles. Right? That's wrong. We need to go back to the instructional manual of the body. We follow instruction menu of our iPad, our car, our electronic items, but we neglected the instruction menu of the body. That's the Bible. Now, habit number three. Put first things first. That's our lesson study, isn't it? Uh, you must prioritize your life. Now, how do you prioritize your life? Let me suggest. The Bible says that this. 6 of Matthew, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm not elaborating on this. I think you all know. If you put God first, other things that you need will follow. Now, a lot of times we forget to put the right things first. We do the secondary things first, which is wrong. Number one, being spiritual is more important than doing service. Now, I'm not saying service is not important. Remember the story of Martha and Mary? Martha was busy cooking, you know, whereas Mary was listening to the words of Jesus. Jesus praised who? Praise Mary, isn't it? But 
He didn't condemn Martha. He, he just said you must do first things first. Number two, planning is more important than working hard. Right? Otherwise, you don't work smart. A lot of people study very hard, but they didn't study smart. Those who study smart will get better grades. Relationship is better than work. Health is better than enjoyment. Time is better than material things. Drinking water is better, more important than bathing. A lot of people, first thing in the morning, they bathe, right? But they forget to bathe inside. How to bathe inside? Drink water. Now a lot of people, first thing in the morning, what do they do? They drink Milo, they drink coffee. Do you bathe in Milo? Do you bathe with coffee? No. You bathe with clean water. Same here. You need to drink. First thing in the morning when you wake up, drink water. You know, many parents here, I want to ask the parents, do you have difficulty waking up your children in the morning? How many of you have problems? No one. Uh, you have problems. I teach you a, 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 a secret. Very easy. First thing in the morning when you wake up, your children are still sleeping, right? Give them a glass of water. After they have drank it, they lie down. They will sure wake up. <laughs> because in the middle of the night, their bladder is full, and then you give them water. You don't need to wake them up already. They get up, go to the toilet, and then... Do you think they go back to sleep? Try this method. It works. And then you, you, you create a habit. Huh? First thing in the morning, you let them drink water. When they become an adult, they will drink water. Am I right? The water represents the Holy Spirit. We need to seek the Holy Spirit every day. Habit number four. Think win-win. Okay, this talking about relationship. I talk about food and talk about health. We must balance what is acidic and alkaline. The, the Chinese believe in uh, yin and the yang, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about uh, acidic and alkaline. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, uh, rather, yeah, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 1 and 2, or verse 1 to 3. When you sit down to dine with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat. Yes, it's figurative. If you are a man of great appetite, do not desire his delicacies or his deceptive food. Who practiced that? A Bible character? Daniel. Daniel! Right, invited by the Sultan, you know, by the governor, by the by the MP, don't eat everything. Because they will give you the best food, less in taste, not nutrients. Am I right? So Daniel chose the, the wisest thing. He chose what is nutritious rather than what tastes good. What tastes good is not good for your body. So this is a very good counsel. And then you must think win win. When you go to food court, a lot of people eat when they are hungry. I don't eat when I'm hungry. I eat and there's nice, nice food. If there's no nice food, I'd rather fast. Now, what are the acidic food? Number one, soft drinks. Interestingly, soft drinks are very hard to the body. What they call it soft drinks? <laughs> Coffee. Coffee has caffeine. Not only uh, make your teeth yellow, and it really draws your reserves. Meat. Okay. Meat is originally not given to Adam and Eve. We don't eat meat in heaven, you know that? So a lot of people ask me, Hey Pastor Chan, why are you a vegetarian? I always tell them I'm preparing for heaven. Amen. How come preparing for heaven? I told them uh, if I still eat meat today, and when I go to heaven, there will be a lot of wet chickens. Hey, why wet chickens? Because you see chicken running around, you cannot eat, you just catch it and lick it on it. <laughs> That's why there are a lot of wet chickens running around in heaven. <laughs> a lot of untamed appetites today. I talk about chicken, and do you know that chicken is the most injected animal? A lot of people eat chicken and they develop tumors, cysts, 
and as a result, they cancer. And worse, they deep fry it and they call it KFC. <laughs> yeah. Wheat. Now, wheat includes rice, bread. Now, I'm not saying you should avoid wheat. Huh? We must eat some acidic food. But I just let you know what are acidic. You need to balance it. You are not supposed to totally avoid acidic food. Processed food. Processed includes additional salt, oil, uh, sugar, okay, canning, preserved food. These are processed food. So we should eat simple food. The less process of uh, the less stages in process, the better it is. Fried food, most cancerous. So in my kitchen, we don't need a cooker food because we don't deep fry our food. And in Singapore, there is this special deep fryer called the Philips Air Fryer. How many of you have it? It really reduces eighty percent of the oil. Now my daughter can eat French fries without dew. You do not know. After I will show you. <laughs> ah, durian. <laughs> Durian, uh, those who are having diabetes cannot eat too much, right? But why, why you wait until you have diabetes, then you don't eat so much? You do not eat so much when you are healthy. That's why God, God put horns uh, on the durian so that it's not good for you. By the way, uh, durian is not found in the Garden of Eden. Uh, because thorns and thistles come after sin. Durian is the fruit now uh, when you wait for it to harvest and it landed on you, it can kill you. <laughs> Those who have got cannot eat durian because it is high in pubic. You don't believe me, you have got, you eat durian, see what happens. You will limp, you will limp all the way home. Okay? okay, then what are alkaline foods? Fruits, vegetables, onions, leeks. Almonds, almonds of all nuts is the alkaline nut. Okay, together with a uh, uh, Chinese chestnut. Okay, water chestnut. All these are alkaline nuts. And then lemon water. What is lemon water? Uh, you know that every day I will cut the lemon after I wash it. Okay, I wash it thoroughly. I cut the lemon and soak it in the tub of water, and I drink it for the whole day. And that's how I maintain my body to become alkaline. And if you do a search on Ellen White's writings, Ellen White used lemon very freely. Almost every day she used lemon. And I discovered that when you use lemon, you will never fall sick. Millet. What is millet? Millet is a grain. In Chinese, we call it xiao xiao mi. Am I right? Xiao xiao mi. That you can feed to the children. By the way, if, if children they have high fever and then you give them porridge and the fever go up, why? Because it's acidic. That's why people who are sick, you cannot give them bread, you cannot give them porridge, you give them millet. Right? Give them lemon water. Uh, uh, there are a lot of questions in your mind. After during lunch, you talk about it. And after lunch at 2 o'clock, there will be another talk. How many of you will be attending that 2 o'clock? Now, what happens if you are in a constant state of acidity? In other words, a lot of people, now all these fast food, unhealthy food are found in fast foods. And what happens? You will have a long term effects of acidity. What happens? You will lose sodium, calcium, and magnesium, and you, in the end, you have osteoporosis, you have disease, you have detoxification problem, you have cancer, fatigue, immune system weakens, aging. Okay. So, if you want to, you know, as aging, right? There is a special machine uh, that can measure your body age. You know, what's the difference between body age and physical age? You may look 50, you may, you may be 50 years old, but inside is actually 40. Some
some people they are 40, but inside they are 70. Yeah. Because they've been smoking, drinking alcohol, they won't live long. You wonder why people can live until 90 or 100, they may be 100 years old, but their physical body is only 60. Some people physical age, they are 40, but their, their body age is already 80, they won't live long. Now how to prevent diseases? Now this is very important. Eh? If you are healthy, 60% of your food must be alkaline, 40% acidic. This is to maintain health. What happens if you are, are sick, you have cancer? Oh sorry, you, not cancer, not cancer. I take it back. If you have other diseases, let's say you have flu, cough, okay, fatigue, you should take 80% alkaline, 20% acidic. Now what happens if you have cancer? 100% alkaline. Okay, this is a very important way to uh, eat. Because I believe that our medicine is found in food. Remember in Revelation, the saints are supposed to eat the leaves of the trees for they are for the healing of the nations. So if you eat vegetables, they are actually constantly being healed. Habit number five. Seek first to understand the purpose of food and then to use them appropriately. Like for example, do you know that uh, bananas are very good for gastric pains? After a bout of diarrhea, it's good to eat potatoes and uh, uh, cauliflower. And when you're sick, you should not eat certain foods. So you must understand the purpose of food. And then also understand the seven colors. Uh, purple food is good for what? Someone tell me. For the heart, okay, green, yellow, fight cancer. Okay. White foods are immune system. Okay. Because of time, I don't want to uh, go into that. You go to do a search, seven rainbow colors. So I don't eat because it tastes good. I eat because it's good for me. That's why I like to eat green job or eggplant. I eat bitter gob. I eat onions. I eat leeks. By the way, I got gout, even though I'm a vegetarian. Mushrooms can cause gout. And uh, nuts. Okay. Durian. I, li I like durian. Sometimes we have durian party. After the durian party, I, I go home. <laughs> so what do I do if I, if I eat a lot of durian? I eat leeks. Because leeks uh, neutralize uric acid. So you must understand the purpose of food and use them appropriately. Use food as your medicine. Now, if you, if your children are having exams, they are very stressed. You know what food to give them for breakfast? Make a guess. Oats. Oats are very good because it's vitamin B complex a lot. Okay. Give them cereal. And then uh, listen to what Proverbs 24 verse 13 says, My son, eat down honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to that taste. I don't take supplements, but the only supplement that I would take uh, is honey. Okay. Some of you don't take honey, but they call their wife honey. <laughs> it's good that you call your wife honey and you take honey as well. Now, the medicines in your daily food, food is probably the most frequently consumed drug uh, in inverted commas, available to all without so much as prescription. Why? Because it's readily available. Certain food can act as cancer blockers, antidepressants, diuretics, anticoagulants, painkillers, antibiotics, and anti-inflammatory agents. Now, let me tell you one. Lemon is a superfood, and 
that is the cheapest. That's why Adam White use it very frequently. If you must eat oil, the only oil is what? Olive oil. But you must understand olive oil has a low boiling point. You cannot use it for deep frying. Otherwise, you change the state of it. And then it's a tranquilizer. What is tranquilizer? You are hyper. And you know, some children are hyper. You give them chocolate, they become super hyper. <laughs> give them more chocolate, they become men of steel. <laughs> and these foods can ward off headaches. Okay? Arthritis, heart attack, stroke, colds, influenza, ulcer, cancer, and many types. And then gallstones, constipation, and virtually all other disorders and the frictions you can take on. Now, you want to know what kind of food is good for your body? Go and look for your core water. They sell this book called Encyclopedia of Foods and Their Healing Power. How many of you have this book? Huh? Only a few. Uh. Very expensive. Uh. I tell you, diseases is more expensive. <laughs> Chemotherapy more expensive. Since when uh, investment in health is cheap? Right? It's even cheaper than going for holidays. Invest in that book. I have that book. There's a saying, uh, a good teacher must have a good dictionary, right? A health conscious person must have a good encyclopedia for food and its healing power. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, any call button here? Maybe Pastor Singh can recommend have a call button to uh, subscribe this book so that give them special discount. Now ask yourself, is it better to eat certain food wrong? How can I boost my good type of cholesterol? How can I add a lot of garlic to my diet? Should I be eating only one type of food or foods or one type of or one type and exclusion of others for the purpose of preventing or treating diseases? Ask yourself, certain diseases are more, you are more prone, especially diabetes. If your parents have diabetes, you are more prone. If your parents have heart disease, you are more prone because they pass bad genes. So you must eat certain food to prevent diseases. Which, cult, which of the culture, Asian, Mediterranean, Mid Eastern has better healthful cuisine? I know certain culture I don't want to mention. Huh? They cook until it becomes like porridge. Okay? They overcook. And certain culture, they deep fry everything. Okay? That's not good. Don't eat according to culture. Eat according to the Bible culture. <coughs> and then what is best about food as medicine? No worry of side effects. Side effects of these drugs would be worse than the original disease that the drug is having. Like most of the drugs are only treating the symptom. They don't cure the disease. But actually, they are postponing the disease in the ugly form many times later on. Okay. You know, taking drugs huh, is like smoking to avoid mosquito bites. <laughs> Smokers don't have mosquito bites, you know. Those mosquitoes get of nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> but why burn your lungs to prevent dengue? <laughs> Why destroy your lungs uh, to prevent malaria? That's, that is not realistic. A lot of people take drugs, it's the same manner. Oh, I got a headache, I take Panadol. It's actually numb your, your pain, it doesn't cure your headache, actually, you know that. Number six, synthesize health and God. That means, uh, you must include God in order to be healthy. Because why? Just like a car run on four wheels, our life has four aspects. Physical, mental, spiritual and social. A lot of people don't have the spiritual aspect. So they are running their cars on three wheels. So when you add another wheel that is God, life has meaning, life has directions, life has balance. You don't overwork, you don't overeat, you don't oversleep. And then you are able to manage stress. Because God takes care of all your problems. And then you have, you increase self-awareness. You, you become, you put yourself into other people's shoes. Your empathy level go up. 
and you are careful on how you talk. Okay. When you are God aware, you become people aware. So how you treat people is a barometer of your relationship with God. You know that? That's why the first commandment cannot be kept unless you keep it together with the second commandment. The greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Love the name of Jesus. Apostle John said, how can you love one another when you don't love God? If you don't love God, you cannot love one another. So you become more resilient to trials and you become emotionally healthy. Okay? So you don't have to worry about using the swear word all the time or four letter word because you are emotionally healthy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? Amen. He has made everything beautiful in His mind. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet no one can fathom what God has done for the Amen. God has created in all of us a God vacuum that only God can but a lot of people are seeking other things to fill up that emotional and emotional, that power, position, and property, or the peace. But I would say, fill up yourself with God. Habit number seven, sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw comes from this uh, guy who used the axe to chop the trees. But he keep on chopping and he realized that the saw becomes we need to rest, take time to uh, sharpen the saw, then you can chop more trees. Right? Uh? Same here. If you work and work and work and you don't rest, what happens? You become less productive, you become emotionally empty, you become depressed, <coughs> and then you rely on chocolate, you rely on coffee, you rely on drugs. So sleep is probably the most natural medicine in existence. So it's, a, it's an avenue where God can heal you. I lay me down, I sleep, and I walk for the Lord can me. So if you can sleep, why? Because God is watching over you. Hey guys, say, I am with you always. Now how to sleep well? Number one, avoid cafe, avoid chocolate also, avoid Milo. Because Milo got chocolate. Right? Number two, warm bath. Number three, read. They bring something calming. Ministry of Healing is the best. That's the first book I read when I became an Adventist. Uh, avoid rigorous exercise. Five hours before you sleep. Don't jaw and then go and sleep. You cannot because your whole blood will be circulating. Talk with your family. And talk to God. And that's how you can sleep. Let's recap. Habit number one, be proactive. A healthy body is honoring God's temple. Number two, begin with the end in mind. Decide how to end your life. Number three, put first things first. Prioritize your life. Number four, think between balancing acidic and alkalinity. Number five, seek first to understand the purpose of food and then use them appropriately. Number six, synergize. Health and God goes hand in hand. Number seven, sharpen the sword, the power of rest. And if you do that, May all of us practice this and when God said it's time for you to die, you just die in your sleep. Begin with the end. And may God bless you. Amen. Amen.